Blog Talk Radio. Once again, to Business Credit Radio. It's June 6, 2013, and it's 5 p.m. Central Time. We're on blogtalkradio.com, and we very much appreciate everybody coming aboard tonight, and hopefully we'll have some callers in here uh, eager to talk to our guest speaker tonight. Uh, We're very much also interested in what our sponsor has to say. This evening's show is partially brought to you by the Credit Management Association, a proud affiliate of the National Association of Credit Management that has helped business-to-business companies with their credit, collections, and financial decisions since 1883. Contact CMA at www.creditmanagementassociation.org for more details on how CMA can benefit you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to uh, talk to our uh, potential listeners and callers for a minute. Uh, yes, we take callers. Uh, you can dial in at 347 989-8342. One more time. That's area code 347-989-8342. And what you do is you just simply punch the pound sign and number one on your keyboard on your phone and it automatically comes up on my studio. I will then bring you on board and say hello. And I will address you by your area code number. Then you can talk to whoever you called in to talk to about or anything you want to say. Uh, I'm going to spend a little minute here uh, to welcome tonight's guest, uh, and that's Mr. Jim McClellan, who is the Director of Trade Development for the Port of Los Angeles. Jim McClellan is responsible for trade development programs to build increased trade through the Port of Los Angeles and the Southern California Gateway. This includes the Port's Trade Connect program, which helps prepare local small to medium-sized businesses enter the global export markets. Trade Connect was awarded the prestigious President's E-Star Award on May 20th, 2013, for service to the nation's exports. He has held this position since January 20, uh, 2007, and previous was, was the Director of Marketing, at which time he directed marketing programs, coordinated the activities of the port's 10 international offices, and worked with customers and service providers to help build the port's long-term clientele. Jim currently serves as president of the Pacific Chapter of the United States-Mexico Chamber of Commerce, chairman of the LA Regional Export Council, that's MEI, and as a member of the executive committee of the Southern California Regional District Export Council, U.S. Department of Commerce. He is a member of the boards of the Foreign Trade Association and California Manufacturing and Technology and Consulting, NIST-MEP, and is also a member of the Board of Advisors for the USC Marshall Center for Global Supply Chain Management. Now, today's show we've entitled Practical Steps to to Reduce International Business Risk. Hi, Jim. Thanks for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Eddie, say hello to Eddie. He's our co-host for tonight. Hello, Philip. Uh, Hello, Eddie. Uh, This is Jim McClellan, and it's a a delight to be with you today. So, uh, well, I think what I'm going to do today is simply go over some practical steps that I've come across in my business experience and also working for the port, which might help businesses enter the global market. Some of these things I'm about to talk about 
are not necessarily in a textbook, but came from, you know, making mistakes and learning on on the job. And uh, so I'm doing this kind of in an informal way, drawing upon my past experiences. Uh, about I was about 21 years in the international shipping business and about 21 years at the port. So hopefully I'm well balanced between the port, private and public sector. Um, but one thing I've learned is that whether you're in whatever sector of business you are, and particularly in the international field of doing business, a handshake or a verbal agreement is wonderful. But one really needs to specify responsibilities in order to mitigate risk. And I believe that you gentlemen will agree that successful business is all about risk mitigation. So, Absolutely. Would say, <laughs> Eddie, would you agree with that? 100%. That's <laughs> even the nature of credit. Exactly. It's yeah, and uh, so I would say in terms of a, a practical step, you you need to trust the verbal agreement, but you have to verify. And, and President Ronald Reagan used that when he was talking about the Soviet Union in the old days. He said, well, if we're going to negotiate a nuclear disarmament treaty, we've got to trust the Soviet Union, but we have to also verify. And so I thought that was very good using that phrase, trust but verify. And since this is a business of details, one way to do that is to separate a, or make a list and specify each party's responsibilities in the deal. For example, the buyer and seller. The more detail that you can put in the commercial agreement or the pro forma, I believe, will down the road eliminate a lot of risk of misunderstanding and potential litigation. Anyway, uh, I so I would kick it off by suggesting that uh, practical step to reduce risk. If you want, I can now go on and give you some more steps. Yes, please. Okay. Well, another step which may seem crazy is simply to set achievable goals. Now, what do I mean by achievable goals? A lot of businesses actually try to tackle too big um, an objective. And I can give you an example, because let's say that they want to leave the domestic market and enter the export market or the international market. Then they want to tackle maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 countries, whereas I, I would recommend that they maybe choose one or two countries to choose the low-hanging fruit where there's the same language or where we have a free trade agreement so that you can take a step at a time. Try to choose the easiest market, the simplest market, the market where there's going to be the least risk, and get used to it that way. For example, Canada and Mexico have been our uh, free trade partners for 20 years on uh, January 1st, and we have established you know, trade rules, and they're a very good partner. So I would say if people want to go internationally, probably uh, try to make to take a small step first and uh, to take an easy one. And I agree and, with that, Jim, because this is very, very wise. Because sometimes international trade is fraught with danger. <laughs> and there's a lot of uh, minefields. You don't want to be in many fields at the same time. You need to demine every field, one field at a time, clean it. <laughs> and once you get accustomed to doing business in that country, you will notice that the next country there is 80 to Would you like to hear more? This is Phil Philbin, the radio talk show host on Business Credit Radio. This full version is available at www blogtalkradio.com or you can go to our website at ccma-llc.com I'm Phil Philbin for Business Credit Radio and we'll leave the phone lines open for you 1-800-227-5278